Well, we are so blessed today to have Darlene join us on the 700 Club Canada. Thank you, Darlene. I have to say, I wept when I read your book. I laughed. <laughs> it made me angry. It brought up so many emotions as I, as you invited me and any reader to read your life story. It starts with a, opens with a scene of a little girl under her front porch crying and uh, tell us the lie. Tell us the thing that was going through your mind as that little girl under that front porch that day. I think the lie that continued throughout my life was that nobody loves me, everybody hates me. Mm. Mm -hmm. You had some very serious trauma going on in your life. Can you take us back to what was happening to you as a child? Uh, what was your growing up experience like? Oh, my growing up experience was, um, it was difficult uh, a lot of the times. Um, I was going through some um, difficulties with my father uh, sexually abusing me at nighttime. Um, and my earliest recollection of that, I was six. Um, and then there were other things going on in our home as well. My, um, my mother was an on-again uh, drinker. Uh, my father was what I would describe as a man of wine, women, and song. Um, he, he was quite the character. He was quite the guy. And there's people watching now that their heart just sunk when you said you were being sexually abused by your father mm -hmm. as young as six years old. Mm -hmm. When did you recall that abuse? Tell us a little bit about how you... Because I know in the story, it, it, it was uh, quite a journey for you coming to terms with that. Um, I was 38 years old at the time, um, just uh, enjoying my children, um, getting them off to school. And then I was heading into work when this horrific memory just came over me. And it was a memory of me um, climbing the stairs, um, holding the hand of a man, and fear, absolute terror engulfing me, um, and just breaking down into a torrent of tears. Um, keeping quiet about it, not saying anything to anybody, thinking that I had really just lost my mind. Right. And you went on a journey of healing mm -hmm. and have been on that journey of healing, which is, we'll get to, leading you to what you do now. And I do believe this book will help many people go on that journey of healing if that's been their experience. But there was more going on in your home. As we said, your dad was quite a character. Tell us what happened before you were born, what uh, the, some of the dysfunction and things that were happening in your, in your family. Well, my father had decided to um, enjoy um, some women friends outside of his marriage um, and ended up having an affair and getting uh, somebody pregnant. And rather than own up to that with uh, his wife, my mother, he um, decided to uh, leave the country and feign his own suicide. Wow. I mean, he, he faked suicide, and, and I'm, I'm reading this thing, he took all the money out of the bank account, stole the bus money that he was driving by, as he parked his bus, you know, mm -hmm. down at the Detroit River. I mean, you don't fake suicide, you don't need money to commit suicide, right? right? So he was found in Florida, charged, brought back into Canada, and what did your mother do? She forgave him. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm reading your book going, what? <laughs> she forgave him? Mm -hmm. Tell me about uh, sort of the dynamics then that were going on in your home, because you just soon discover, well, later discover, she's not really your mother. That's right. Um, so she forgave him, and I think as a means to keep that marriage together. Right. We have to realize this is the 1950s. Right. There uh, weren't a lot of women that were divorcing at the time. Yeah. and um, But I think it set up an environment which was very difficult for her to live in, as well as for uh, us as children. Right. Um, so um, he ended up actually after that um, having another affair with her sister. Wow. And um, that ended up uh, being my biological mother. But so there is the mystery. Yes. Right? Years later, you find out that your mother, who you were raised by, is not your true mother, and it was her sister. Now tell us about your discovery. When you discover this whole identity issue, which you talk about in your book, that you've now discovered your birth mother, what was that like for you? 
It was very difficult for me at first, obviously, because I didn't know that the lady who raised me wasn't my birth mother, um, but also because of who the woman was. Um, she was my mother's sister, um, and she had struggled her whole life with paranoid schizophrenia and had been in and out of the hospital. Um, and so many times growing up, I was actually very frightened of her um, because of some of her behaviors. Yeah, well, yeah. it was it was a definitely a traumatic situation situation for everyone and you know there's families where there's hidden lies for so many years mm -hmm. right and and I was really struck by a few things but in your journey you are very honest about your struggle with darkness fear and anger it said it wore me down and that's when I entertained thoughts of suicide I rationalized the irrational and considered whether death was an option to living especially to living with this ongoing assault on my mind you know the enemy is not fair is he no and the enemy gained, even as a young child, you dabbled in the occult and opened yourself up, even as a victim of sexual abuse. The enemy, he doesn't, he's not fair. And he really traumatized you in your thinking and your mind and emotions. What would you say to people now? What did you learn about the role of the enemy and what God can do in your life? What I learned about the role of the enemy is that he, he not only is he not fair, he's very sneaky, mm -hmm. um, but he's also very blatant. Um, there were times when I knew it was the enemy who was, who was attacking me, um, being told very clearly in an authoritative voice that I needed to go and commit suicide. Um, and and so it became a real battle I felt for my life. Yes. Um, either I would choose for the enemy or yeah. I would choose for the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. How were you able then, because here you are sitting here with this story of redemption, not just of you, but of your family, which we believe for many generations, mm -hmm. God's redeemed you and your family. What are the truths that God taught you? How did you get free of this suicide and fear and anger? There was a moment I know of forgiveness towards your dad. Would you say that was a pinnacle point? I believe forgiveness is definitely a pinnacle point. When I think of our uh, scripture in 2 Corinthians that says that we need to forgive so that we can fight against the enemy. Um, and that's a very loose translation of mine. That's um, a good be one. Because I think that when, when we forgive, we let God take over, we let God take control. And the enemy then has no wiggle room right. in, into doing uh, that kind of redemptive work in a person's heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. The beauty of forgiveness, it's powerful, it's set you free. I mean, you had many things to forgive your father for. And that was later in your life. What has God done now in your life uh, since you've come through this journey? How did you break free of this depression, which was quite overwhelming to you for years? Um, I believe there were a number of things that I would have done to have broken free from that. One would have been um, definitely forgiving my father. One was really putting my identity in Jesus Christ as my heavenly father. Um, and then there would have been some other things like medication, support, counseling, and definitely the love of my husband. I saw the role of your husband in this uh, beautiful, supportive story. And you also entered into community. You withdrew for a while, but you found the, the, the healing in community. Would mm -hmm. you say that's a, a very significant factor as well? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, Psalm 139 is woven through your whole story. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, right? You yeah. could never outrun the Holy Spirit. He no. is with you. Um, Thank you for your story. Amazing grace, abounding love. There's so many good truths in here. And for people who are struggling with unforgiveness and fa family trauma, I would highly recommend uh, this book. Thank you for writing this. Thank you for your transparency. And may God bless you as you continue to help take others on a healing journey. Oh, thank you so yeah. much, Lori. I would highly recommend that you get this book. It will bring so much truth to you today. And now an unfaithful husband is met with the power of forgiveness. This is how his wife's strength restored their marriage.